All right, everybody, this doesn't really look probably like anything, since it just says continue or skip the intro. But we are going to be playing a game that I've wanted to do for a long time, but I wanted Adam along for the ride on this. That's I'm why excited. I've I never done it. About it. This is Callahan's Cross Time Saloon. This was um, created by Legend Entertainment, one of the other major adventure game people from the era that people don't really talk a lot about. They talk about LucasArts and Sierra, but not... Um, legend as much. They had some pretty great games. This is one of them. This had a very great review when it came out, but <clears throat> coming out in 1997, you know, a it was getting towards the end, and it was they used the old school graphics, so I think people were just like, ew, it's not 3D. So that probably hurt it, but Josh Mandel was the designer of this, so King Graham himself did this. Um, he also helped with did Cedric help? No. He also did a lot of the <laughs> writing. And you'll see the puns. So, let's let's continue. I literally had just started it. It looks clean. I like the graphic. Yeah, they're very... Are we going through a dimensional portal? Sort of. It's fractals. It's kind of the story, you know, it's based off the, these books. The Callahan's the place. Limits of the universe. Basically, these people, these aliens want to destroy us because we're useless. Seems right. <laughs> Parabolus. Parabolus. Here, here. I'm here, Gingrenage. There you are. How uh, did the budget meeting go? All about as expected. <laughs> they didn't withdraw all my funding, did they? They wouldn't eliminate. Uh, such... The cosmic endowment's been cut by ninety percent. Universe building is considered non-essential. <laughs> it's over. It's history. Pack it up. They're canceling the universes. Why one of my universes? What is it? Bad ratings? What they said is too expensive to maintain. <laughs> Not enough return on investment. But they're thinking in the short term. Creating these universes is an investment. Oh, I told them that. I told them how these universes spawn ideas and cross-pollinate and artistic merit and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and they said, unless you can demonstrate some sort of infinite redeeming value to the universe exhibit, all funding will be revoked effective immediately. So you think if I were to take a good look around and find something of infinite redeeming value, they might reconsider? Like what? DNA? <laughs> Saran wrap? <laughs> It's just not good enough. Hey, it's over, Parabolus. Right sizing. That's the word of the day. It seems like a cross between uh, well, swell and wealthy that, of mine the Star and Trek guy. movie <laughs> and uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Right, it's like, where's the whales? Convert this into liquid form. So we started in the city, had it drinking every shitty little gin mill. It said shitty. Then a cabbie up in Harlem took us clear across the river into Brooklyn. Where he joined us in a group. Now What's this we were just a trifle by the time we hit Astoria at 80 miles an hour in reverse. But that was nothing. Nothing. We even that we did as we was leaving from time to time. That's a free strategy guide. They said bad words on it. Drinking up a windfall, baby. We were drunker than a monkey with a skin fall. So goddamn drunk it was sent for. I believe I ain't sober yet. Oh, with the space chunk. It's almost like Wally. <laughs> and supposedly, yeah, Spider man. Robinson, who wrote the books, is the guy I'm singing. I'm not allowed to tell you the exact address, since the owner, Mike Callahan, doesn't want that kind of publicity. Neither does my friend Spider Robinson, the guy who writes down the stories I tell him. Ooh, I like that. But I'll tell you this much: it exists in our universe, in the outer arm of our spiral galaxy, the Milky Way. It's on an island just off the coast of North America, Long Island, on Route 25A in Suffolk County. <clears throat> From there on, you're on your own. But the way most people find Callahan is, well, they just sort of find it when they really need to. Like the night this guy walks into the bar. 
I should tell you right now that I'm not a detective. I'm not a spy. I'm not a leader of the Rebel Alliance, and I don't run down quarters shooting everything in sight, although I know some otherwise very nice people who do. I'm a <laughs> folk singer. Yeah, that's right, a folk singer. Now, I know it sounds glamorous and obviously fraught with life-threatening situations and heart-stopping peril. But try to keep up with me anyway. I spend a lot of time at Callahan's. As a result, you are not the first person to take up temporary residence inside my head. You probably won't be the last. <laughs> a few of us are accomplished psychics, and the rest of us are trying to learn. Anyway, you'll find out more about Callahan's as the evening goes on. But right now, it's riddle night. And as usual, Doc's supplying the riddles. Pay attention, because if we don't win this contest, we're broke. And if we're broke, the evening's gonna end mighty early. Okay, ten riddles. Everybody know the rules? Yeah, what are the rules? No. Does everybody want to know the rules? Or do you want to try to figure it out for yourself? Don't tell us. Is there a time limit? No, there's no time limit. Go. Does spelling count? No, ask Mike if you have any other questions. Now go. Look at the chalkboard. Cranky exists, bootlegging devices, grind teeth, additionally, green. Rapid, vivocilious material, arguably superior computer, Mac, Fiber Fleetwood. Cell. Slender projectiles, legend, thump materials containing metal, portion wealthy woman, four sharp major key, correct ancient game, bullion funeral transport. <laughs> <clears throat> A face that launched ships. Because it, it's it's it, lead. Yeah. Okay. So lead and a zeppelin. So you can actually ask people. Most all the regulars are here tonight. Gentlemen John Kalan, Ijam Latimer, Rachel Slippery, Joe Mazer, and his wife Susie and Susan, Paul <laughs> and Jim McDonald, Dink Fogarty, and others. There's quite a few people you don't recognize. He has two wives. What it sounded like. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Callahan built this bar himself back in the late 40s, right after the war. He built it to last. It's rock solid and sound as a dollar in some alternate universe where the dollar is sound. <laughs> yes. Hmm. You're new to Callahan's, aren't you? I'm just here for a drink. But you haven't been in before. Yes, I mean, you're right. I haven't been in before. You hold out your hand, what you looks at, and with uncertainty shakes. I'm Jake. I'm one of the regulars. If you have any questions, you feel free, okay? Mike runs things a little differently around here than in most places. He does? Well, there's the contest. Well, there's the contest. Several nights a week we have them, usually. Punday night, <laughs> and uh, whoever tells the worst pun of the evening drinks free. Tonight's riddle night. Tall Tales night is... It's kind of like Punday night, but the emphasis is on Tall Tale. But they have to be true, of course. Of course. Oh, we've got the Friday night fireside Fillmore night. That's not a contest, but it's kick and music. Which sort of leads me to the rule. The rule? Well, it's got to do with the clientele here. See, most people don't wander into this place for no reason. I mean, for being right next to 25A, we don't get a lot of drop-ins. Anyway, stick around. Chances are you'll see something. I'd put money on it, if I had any. Money? Yeah, that's why I'm out to win Riddle Night tonight. Get my bar tab back. <laughs> you'll get your money back if you win the riddles on that blackboard? That's the deal. Hmm. What else is done differently here than in most places? Oh, uh, there's a toast. Well, there's the toast. You can make a toast out of any sentiment or occasion, of course, but some people use it as a way of spilling their troubles or asking for absolution. You grant absolution here? Well, of course, the absolution is only good with us. 
<laughs> Sometimes that's all the absolution you really want, for somebody to tell you it's okay. You make your toast, you throw the glass into the fireplace, try to hit the bullseye. It's the center of the parabola, and the glass doesn't fly into the room so much. Then you've got the floor. I get the floor. You'll have our full attention as long as you need it or want it. Got it? It's very interesting. Is there anything else I should know about? How many glasses does he buy? Well, you should probably <laughs> right. keep your eyes open. Something will happen tonight. Thank you. I will. I kid you. Oh, goodness. Okay. Scruffy man. Try to tri strike up a conversation with a shabbily dressed gentleman whom you've never seen before tonight. Despite the friendly overtures you make towards him, he barely says a word. This is a new interface where you click and then it tells you what you can do. Yep. Oh, shorty. St ooh. Shorty's apparently trying to concentrate. Since the man has a tough time staying focused, don't screw him up. Long Drink makes eye contact with you and smiles, but you can tell the way his face keeps drifting to the side he wants to hear the end of Drake of Joke Mary's telling. But joke. Okay. <clears throat> uh, nobody wants to talk, so let's see if we can't figure these out. I know what they are. You can get hints. They're bands, that's the joke. That's an interesting person back there named Squish. Jake, this is Zilch. A pleasure to meet you, uh, Zilch. I apologize. Presently, my command to or of English speech is fractional presently. I attempt improvement. Well, that's you pretty good. You may <laughs> call me as squishing noise. Well, how about just squish for short? Squish? Zootethful. Squishy good. <laughs> bar person. Hi, bar person. Okay. So they're definitely aliens here. Mm-hmm. Hey, Jake. What's going on? Nothing. It's been real quiet. Wanna grab Lady Macbeth and liven up the joint? Maybe later, okay? Yeah, okay. You participating in Riddle Night? Yeah, not really. Glanced at it. Offhand could only get one clue, so... Which one? E. The four-sharp major key. It's E. Hello. Which was in the the eighth one? I think so. Wondered when you'd get around to saying hi. Oh yeah, I'm being real antisocial tonight. How's business? Slow. You'd think bombs were out of style. Just as well. I'm getting old. I lost a long drink. He's never gonna let me forget it. Give yourself a break. He's an Iron Man. Always used to be able to beat him. Not anymore. <laughs> you win the contest? Sure am. You need help, Sonny Boy? Can you give me just a mild hint? I don't know if it's mild or not. You want one? All right, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, this one was easy for me. When people irritate me, I get cross. I say, don't grate on my nerves, right? So I tried great for irritate, and it worked perfectly. But that hasn't happened in years. <laughs> okay, give me another. Well, there was a second clue for a different puzzle than what I said. Wink, wink. <laughs> so, like I said, they're band names. And if you are not from a particular era... Like, yeah, good like good names. luck. Yeah. So. Irritate, great. Mm hmm. And occupied to. Well, occupied to capa capa capacity full. And then lifeless would be dead. So grateful dead. Yeah, it's grateful one. dead. Yep.
Slender projectiles and legend. So projectiles are things that are flying through the air. Yeah, like, like bullets or arrows. And then a legend. Well, it's Aerosmith. So I'm gonna put that in there. I know it because of the arrow. Like, there's really nothing else you could really. Well, what's a vagabond? What's another name for that? A hobo or... A poor person on the street. Like a, a, tramp. a tramp. Yeah. So... Broth would be soup. Yeah. So it's super tramp. Soup <laughs> or... Like yeah. an or... Like soup, a soup or tramp. Yeah. Rapid fibrous cellulose material. Superior computers Mac. And there's only one band from that era. It's Fleetwood Mac. It's how I know well, it. Wood is a fibrous cellulose material. So, wood, and then... Fleet is fast. Yeah. <clears throat> Fleet of foot. One, cranky. A green means young. Like, inexperienced. Green, young. Additionals and a uh, bootlegging would be a still, so Crosby stills Nash and Young, <laughs> the yeah. the full version Nash of is that. Grinding your teeth. Yep. Additionally, and Green Young. The Crosby part is the one that I didn't quite get. The cranky exists. Row. Is the propel with the a wildcat and vocal inflection is a tone? It's Rolling Stones. Correct. Let's see, correct would be right. Ancient game. It's Righteous Brothers. Oh, hearse. And yeah. Bullion is a broth. We're like. Yeah. Yeah. Broth hearse. Brothers. Yeah. So it's righteous. This is like one of those party games where you say things that sound like other things. Uh huh. Never was really good at those. Portion, wealthy woman, four sharp major key was E. Portion, woman's female. Wealthy is rich. And, and portion's portion. part of yeah. Partridge family. Thump. Thud? <laughs> yeah, thud. And oars yeah, or pedals. So, the doors. How clever. Astounding! 100%. I'm impressed. And you did it without any help, right? Mike, give this man back his tab. And he drinks free tonight on me. Coming right up. I hereby pronounce Riddle Night at an end. Jake, you want this left where you can display your genius and bask in the adulation of your devoted yes. fans? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Doc wheels the blackboard into the back room and everyone goes back to partying. The adulation of your devoted fans sure didn't last long. There's our money. Yay, money. You've had this wallet for as long as you can remember. All of your old wallets have been totally forgotten. <laughs> How much money? You won $21 back in the Riddle Night contest. You didn't even realize you drank that much. 
Guess you picked a good night to try a hickory daiquiri, a Phillips screwdriver, and a mother superior. Well, and we continue to drink, don't we? Free? Yeah, let's talk to Mike Callahan. Good job, Jake. You couldn't have done it without us. So, what now? What now? Well, that's up to you. There's a lot going on tonight. Such as? Such as, well, let's see. Josie's all in a snit over something. You could see what that's all about. We've got the two drop-ins. They could probably use some chatting up. Or you could go see what's keeping Piotr. Okay, I'll do some talking. See if I can turn up anything exciting. You all come back now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have already played that game. Can I wear the hat? You try it on and look in the mirror. Not only does it do little for you, but it doesn't do the hat or the mirror any favors either. <laughs> okay, this game's great. You give yourself the once-over. Nothing between your teeth, nothing obvious. In your beard, hair delightfully tuss tussled, and all orifices presentable. Even your butt. <laughs> Move the wall. So he said talk to Josie. Is this... Tom, that's Tommy. Okay, I don't... I like the 360 view. Right? I do too. I Well, I don't... There's... Oh, there's Doc. Let's talk to Doc. There she mm -hmm. is. I don't want to hear a lot of Long Island jokes, thank you very much. Now, there's a deer park in the north port of town. Perfect for Huntington's of pheasant. You can't miss it. To be sure, it's in plain view. Uh-oh. Here come the puns. People of Long Island... It's definitely Josh Mandel when the puns come along. Mon to Montauk, not listen to... Oh, no! The next thing I know, you'll be singing Come Back to Jamaica. I don't know what to say. I'm just beside myself. Yeah, sorry. It's a scent to reach that far for a joke. <laughs> I would bury you if I could think of a topper for that. Sorry, this is the point where I slip out. Doc, you can babble on all you want, Todd, but personally, I'm against it. Free port for everybody. <laughs> a chone, the local equivalent of a cheer and a groan, goes up from the crowd. Doc sings his head in surrender. Doc surrendering. Now there's a sight not often seen. I prefer to think of it as a scene not often sighted. Jake? Yeah? Are you really buying a round of port for everyone? No. Okay, I thought not. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, he's moved. All right. Josie Bauer is a member in good standing of the Time Police, an organization that doesn't exist yet. She's also a humor groupie. <laughs> Win the Punday Night Contest and she'll accompany you home for the evening. Doc keeps winning. Damn his eyes. Evening, Jake. Officer Bauer. Is this an official visit? I'm officially visiting, but I'm off duty. So you're not just waiting to slap the cuffs on Alfie should he happen to drop in? Far as I know, he's clean. Can't a cop simply go out to a bar without being hassled? Am I interrupting something? Nope. Doc and I are just weighing the merits of various tropical beans. You're talking about beans. It's my opinion that chocolate, you know chocolate, right? The aroma cacao, which translates to food of the gods. Hey, no proselytizing. Yes, I am familiar with chocolate. Doc, on the other hand, seems to feel that coffee... Oh, well, when you say it that way, I think that coffee, at least the way Mike makes it God's blessing, is easily superior to chocolate. More complex, more sophisticated... Less reliant on sweeteners and vanilla and other additives. And less of them. I don't know, I and like a lot of milk and coffee sugar is so in my coffee. Mm -hmm. and I don't even like coffee at all. Caffeine. What do you think, Jake? <laughs> if I tell you which one I really prefer, one of you is going to be pissed. If I tell you which one I really prefer, one of you is going to be pissed. That doesn't matter, just speak your mind. Yeah, just be honest. Don't worry about losing one of us as a friend over something as trivial as this. Yeah, you've got plenty of friends. You can afford to lose at least one. <laughs> well, I guess I prefer chocolate on a more sensuous level. See? This is anecdotal evidence. It doesn't prove anything. If he had said he liked coffee better, you wouldn't think so. Oh, of course I would. How did all this come up? Josie reaches into her pocket and unfolds a small brochure, which she then hands to you. This is for my time, Jake. You skim the brochure. It's an ad for a brand of chocolate you never heard of. 
It also outlines the process by which chocolate is manufactured from bean to bar. Yeah. Here, look at this paragraph. She snatches the snatches back the brochure and points to a particular paragraph, which she shoves in your face. Read it. The world's greatest chocolate is believed to have been grown in one small area in the Brazilian rainforest. Unfortunately, this discovery was made too late to save the grove of trees, later designated Theobroma cacao ultimisarum, and exists only in a couple of pods too damaged to be viable. The loss of these trees to the chocolate world can never be estimated as they were destroyed by the Faxon Castoroga Pencil Company during its clear-cutting operations in Boa Vista. It goes on to reveal when the grove was believed to have been destroyed. When's that? Tomorrow. This tomorrow? You mean tomorrow, tomorrow? That'd be the one. The Faxon Castoroga right instead of Ticonderoga. Faxon Castoroga headquarters <laughs> in Manhattan and stop them. It's nighttime. It doesn't have to be. What do you say, Jake? Want to come along? You're a folk singer. You know how to raise your voice in protest against the pig dogs of the fascist military-industrial <laughs> complex. Interesting words from a cop. <laughs> you with me or not? Sure. Hey, it's, hey, it's chocolate. Sure, I'm there. Yeah. Maybe we'll go down in history. All right. It's a wild goose chase, I tell you. You ready to start, or do you want to stick around for a bit? Let's go. Ready when you are, JB. Great. Say your goodbyes if you want, and let's get out of here. This is interesting. They just kind of plop you down into the story. You step out of Callahan's and Josie follows right behind Ready? you. As I'll ever be. Follow me. Well, originally this game was supposed to be a lot bigger, but Take Two Interactive, there's a whole lot of issues. Like, there's supposed to be ten episodes you could go through, and there's only six. Josie hails a cab and you run. You join her and she climbs in. She has the driver take you to the nearest Long Island Railroad station. Or she pays for tickets for the two of you to Penn Station. As you emerge from the dank, urine-scented subway, you're surprised to see daylight. Hey, just how long were we on that train? So I rewound the clock a few hours. I thought it would be nice to give ourselves a running start. Besides, I figure we should start at the top, at Fax and Castoroga, and see if we can't just do this the easy way. Why'd we take the subway? Why not just zap us here? Or are the time police not supposed to take riders? Time we can handle. Space, we're not quite there yet. I want to go from time to time, I can do it. I want to go from place to place, I have to hoof it, just like everybody else. And here I thought you could do anything. No, I only do a few things, but I do them very, very <laughs> well. I like her. So we have our brochure. It's a brochure for Godavanta Chocolate Company. You notice that the year in the back flap in small print is over 50 years in the future. It sounds like a dog. Man, the, the, the niche stand looks really good for that era. I mean, I'm kind of impressed by what this looks like. I'd like a hot dog. Please. New Yorkers pay more for a monthly parking spot than people in most other cities pay for their apartments. For years, people parked anywhere they wanted. Then some jerk who wanted to spoil the fun for everyone told the mayor that people were doing this because... The cost of parking legitimately was higher than paying for the parking tickets. Steal the car. Although it's against your nature, you ring for the car door. Josie, watch. I was. I didn't mean. I didn't save. Car. Oh no. Oh yeah. And where are you going to park it? Good point. Whew. Never mind. I just thought he'd be like <laughs> trouble. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> you think your butt got saved later? Okay. Man. He looks like he might know something. Loiter? Reason with the loiter? Your first instinct is to shake the guy by the shoulders and shout reason into his face. Something holds you back. He appears to be holding a conversation with a six, an imaginary six-foot bouncer named Harvey. I don't think that's so imaginary. Hey, aliens don't you interrupt Harvey. Okay. You beg the meter maid for clemency on the part of the car's driver. She explains she can't because she works on commission. Or did she say <laughs> she works on the commissioner? Oh. All the above. Masochist? This woman keeps asking about various flavors of pretzels, and the pretzel man keeps telling her he only has one flavor. She must be from some Scandinavian country where they have whole department stores devoted to different flavored pretzels. <laughs> I can't. She's speaking pretzelese or something. <laughs> I'd like a pretzel. You can find roving food stands like this one all over Manhattan. 
This one sells pretzels, hot dogs, pop, and knishes for those with no Jewish friends and or who haven't the vaguest idea what the hell a nish is. sort of a nosh of schmaltzy Farglanet. Cool, but it's not really. Does that help? <laughs> yes. Pretzel. Buying a pretzel from one of these vendors is a form of legalized gambling. Will you get the one that's coated with salt over every millimeter, or the one with only three grains of salt on the whole thing? Are those black lines on the bottom simply scorched, or is it road grit? Will it be stale or totally mushy? Odds of winning are 1 in 3,644,309. So like the lottery. <laughs> you make small talk with the pretzel man, who insists on being called a pretzel person. He reveals that his products are actually pretzels, and that they can't legally be called pretzels because they're really made of dried, reconstituted pretzel flakes. This way, they all come out looking the same, and they stack easier for shipment. Hey, that's like a Pringle. is isn't really a chip. <laughs> As if anyone would eat something like that. I didn't know Pringles weren't chips until I really read the candy. Yeah, they really aren't. They got a... That must be Bertman, owner of Bertman Sushi Shack. He looks about as Japanese as Ahmed, the guy who runs your local Texas barbecue joint. Looks Texan. He asks the camera what or what he's shooting. He looks at you if you're completely dense and replies, film. Having the young man may choose to use you as a photographic subject, you try to swagger casually with a carefree, <laughs> suave, and debonair air. You only look like you're drunk and sloppy, tired, loose-necked, and oblivious. Hmm. Half off sunglasses. This fr this freely sweating rollerblader has stopped to look in the window of the sushi restaurant and is checking out the marvelous plastic food displayed therein. The plastic raw tuna is looking especially shiny and surreal today. The tags on the sunglasses bear little tags that say similar to those as seen on TV and explain except no imitations. These are real amber blockers. Guaranteed not to fade, peel, crack, or split. Don't you just hate it when your sunglasses peel? <laughs> There's the door, man. There's the subway we came in through. Another police officer. The policeman takes off his hat and scratches his copper top as he introduces himself as Al Kaline. He can't tell you how many guys he's charged with battery, but the cells are full. Alkaline batteries, people. That's one tired policeman. Alkaline batteries. <laughs> A bag of New York City trash. Ignore it. Everyone else does. Oh, the 90s in New York. I like the gun on the New York shirt there. It wasn't quite cleaned up just yet. No. From the amazed look on this young man's face, you'd think he'd never seen a crappy merchandise stand before. Summer clearance on all Statue of Liberty merchandise. Here's the shopkeeper's description of himself from the personals column. DWM, Tom Selleck lookalike, 47, looks 30, brown hair, eyes, height, weight, proportional. Loves the outdoors, travels, animals, quiet times. Must be trim and attractive, blonde's preferred, photo a must. There's a whole bunch of different uh, baseball caps there. Oh. Where can I get an outfit like yours? Independently owned and operated, my friend. I mean, the outfit you're wearing. One of a kind. You can't get these anymore. Saw this guy on a computer wearing one of these and said, Hey, John, had to have this made special. It's Leisha Suit Larry. <laughs> it's a life, real life Leisha Suit Larry. I'm looking for something in particular. What? <laughs> wow. How convincing are the passports? My best work. I've been smuggling oh, stuff in and that out of the country handy, for years yeah. now, my passports. And they never questioned it or searched my luggage. What have you been smuggling? Luggage. But be <laughs> quiet about it, all right? And you're in luck. Passports are buy one, get one free. If I ever need a fake one, I know who to go to. Don't wait. The same. This sale's only for a couple more years. Little do you know, the passports would be a lot harder to come by in the future. You have to jump through a lot more hoops. Oh yeah. You enter the office building and take the elevator to the 15th floor. Well actually you go to the 24th floor because you got the wrong bank elevators, so you had to take the elevators back down to the lobby and then up to the 15th floor. Technically though you didn't take the express elevators back down to the lobby because you got out on the first floor thinking it was the ground floor. It's not. 
So you have to take the stairwell down one flight to the lobby. But as you discover too late, the stairwell doors are locked on the inside. After pounding on the stairwell door for a while, you decide you'll have to climb up floor by floor and hope to find one of the doors unlocked. <laughs> Six flights and two elevator rides later, exhausted but congratulating yourself for all the exercise you've gotten today, you emerge on the 15th floor and shuffle into the swank offices of Faxton Castoroga. <laughs> the TV. They <make> pencils. <laughs> They're pencil pushers. Okay, well, in the next episode, I guess we'll look at this pencil place. So, <laughs> oh, what a fun game. Hey, they're number one and number twos. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Bye, everybody. Bye.